Hello, this is Monster Restore 91. Today we're doing a brake change on a 2007 Chevy Tahoe. Okay, before we loosen the lug nuts, before we raise it, we have to loosen a little bit the lug nuts with the 22 millimeter socket with a breaker bar, half inch. And then I loosen it up a little bit. Not a lot because you don't want the truck to fall on you. Now I lift it up right here in the chassis with the jack stand. So I might leave it like this so it could be safer. As long as the wheel is not touching the ground, you could see it's not even touching the ground and you could spin it. It's enough to change the brakes or a tire also. As long as you don't have a big tire then or else you're gonna have to lift it up more higher so now i'm gonna start removing the tire and we're gonna check right now the the life of the brake pad at the front rotors the front brake so we're gonna use a tool right now and see how much how much brake pad wear it has but it's most likely gonna have to be replaced because i could hear a grinding sound so we'll see right now Okay, now we're gonna check on the level of the brake pad. You put this, you insert it, and then you see how much brake wear it has. Okay, now we see that it needs some new brake pads because it says on red. This tool comes in handy so you could know if it's time to replace the brake pad. So green is still good. But you most want to change it once it before it turns into yellow. Because once it hits to yellow, it turns into red and you'll be this much left of the brake pad. So, it's not good. And then you could damage the rotor, so it could be dangerous. You could crash or you, so it could get seriously injured. So, we're going to replace the front rotors and the brake pads. Cause we don't know, we don't want to cut them because there's a limit to cut these rotors and it's not worth it cause you might run out. So we ready to start all over again. So we'll start losing the caliper right now. So we're going to use a 19 inch socket half and put it right here. Already losing the top one. So what you do is you could use a pipe right here so you could, help, so you could get more leverage. But me, I'm a judo chop this and it should loosen. Judo chop. The next step is to loosen the caliper. So what you do, you put it between the slot of the rotor, like these types. Slot right here. And then you press it towards you, gently. could loosen the pressure out of the caliper so now that we're losing it like this from here just gently we start removing it never let never let this fall because or else you rip up the the brake hose so you have to be very careful set it down try not to twist it neither so what we could use is one of these like that put the caliper here without twisting the hose right there and you tie it up right there it should be good you don't really it's better just to tie it up just in case but right here it's not really moving that much so on to losing the bracket and the caliper bracket and these little brackets 
so we could clean them up and remove this. This is easy to take out, you just go like this. Slide them out. Just like this one. And that's it, that's why they charge you a lot, just for the simplest thing. We'll clean these if these still look good, we could still keep them, but we'll see right now. Sometimes the aftermarket, they don't look the same and they're kind of loose. So before we remove it, let's, we, could, we could clean them first and see the conditions, how it looks. And then onto a new rotor and new brake pads. So now we're gonna loosen the bracket with the 18 millimeter. This is gonna be a little bit hard to take out, but you just press, you just push your whole weight and it should come out. The four bolts that you have to take out is from the brake caliper. And these two from here are from the brake caliper bracket. So it's only four bolts that you lose in these two and then these two and that's it. Okay, now I remove the caliper, the bracket, and we can't take it out because we have to use a T30, T30 Torx, so we could take out this bolt and it should come out. So the way you could hold this, you could also put a one of these, but any one of these pry bars, so you could hold it so it won't be spinning, and it should stop moving like this. And okay, always make sure to match up the front rotors or the rear rotors, whichever you're doing, because the front and rear are different. This is more thinner. This is the same one, but look at this one. This is the rear ones. How do I know it's the rear ones? Take a look right here. See? It has a big hub, just like the other one. So, always make sure that, always make sure that they match. They have the same holes, the same hub. So always match the hub, if they match, then these are the ones. So always make sure to measure the diameter, everything. So now we're gonna install the front rotors. Okay, now that I installed the front rotor, make sure it's fully seated around here. And make sure it lines up with the hole right here. These ones, there's no holes, there's no thread inside there only on this one so now I'm gonna tighten the bolt the Torx the T30 and then you tighten it so this is how you do it you just tighten it as much as you can don't over tighten just do a little bit and that should be it so that's how you do it when you tighten the Torx Okay, now I set it down to 139 foot pounds and I tighten it right here. So you just turn the knob to clockwise. Now it's gonna be time to tighten the bracket from the caliper. Okay, so now I match up the, the old brake pad with this one, with the new one. So it makes sure it looks the same, the same thing. So now I'm gonna install the new brake pads right now. I'll show you right now how to do it. Also, I forgot to mention that if you see this one, this new one, it has the brake 
sensor right here so this one goes in the back the other one does not have it does not have this um, this brakes this brake sensor right here this brake sensor so make sure this one goes on the back like this one and how I put it right here on the back and then the regular one you just put it in the front which is this one this one does not have a brake sensor so this one goes like this goes in the front so make sure this one with the it looks different from this one so this one goes in the front and this one goes in the back of the rotor so remember front and back okay now I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant brake brake lubricant to reduce noise or wear so you just get a little bit right here not a lot I already put some right here now I need to put some on the top like that and put it on the other side also right here in the, in the back right there where it slides well you'll see it's the same as the front so you'll see and then you put some right here also right here where it slides and right here and that's it well another one i'll show you right now how to put it on the rear one this is the front one so i'm just doing the front right now so i could just put it right here and then you just slide it in see not a big job it's just simple job and people get charged a lot and it doesn't require special tools so this is how it goes so now we're gonna reset the the caliper so what you use you use never use a new one always use the old brake pad and we're gonna press it down with a C clamp like this make sure this go, lines up right here so when you pressure it, it doesn't move anywhere. Make sure it lines up good. And both pistons should be pressed at the same time. So this this caliper has two pistons. Usually some cars have one, but this one has two. It's the same thing. Just make sure you use the same procedure that I'm doing right now. I know some of them, they do require special tools. So right now we're just pressing it down, resetting the pistons. Because no matter how hard you try, if you don't reset the pistons, you're never going to put this caliper back in. So right now we're just applying pressure, just pushing them back. Make sure not to drop the caliper. Don't break the hose. And do it as much as you can. If it doesn't spin no more, then already I'm going to start losing the C-clamp. Right now we're going to put the new brake caliper right now so now it's already seated do you see it went back in we just use this one the same one you could see the the piston so a little bit and time to slide it in there we go now it's completely sit, sit in make sure everything lines up and it should be good Okay, now we're gonna install the brake caliper. Right there, it's fully seated. This thing has to go in, the little rubber, where the slider pin goes, and then start putting it in. Make sure it lines up with the hole. You'll fill it. If it doesn't wanna go in, it means that you have to move it a little bit, play around with it until you get it right, until it goes in. There we go, got it in. Now I'm gonna put the bottom one. It's the same procedure. Make sure it goes in, you'll feel it. Once it goes in, finger tight in it first and then you use the ratchet or the torque. The 
torque ratchet and I believe you have to tighten it to 74 foot pounds these lighter bolts All right, now I'm gonna tighten it with the ratchet. Uh, the brake rotor. So it's ready to start putting the tire back and before before we, we start driving, I'm gonna show you how to reset the pistons, everything. Cause you don't wanna drive it without pumping the pedal first. So I'll show you guys once I'm done with the other side. Okay, now we're gonna reset the brakes. So he's gonna press it all the way down, and then take it, take the feet out, and then press it again, like maybe like five times, until the brake pedal gets harder. Right there, you feel it harder, so I know that it's already the pit, the brake caliper is already good. That you reset it, cause or else you're gonna crash. We have learned the hard way before. Alright, so this is it. We're just turning back the tire. Make sure the hub is touching the wheel. Or else you're putting it wrong. So it's actually making contact. As you can see, there's no gap. So that means I put it good. So now I'm just tightening it with the breaker bar. You could torque it if you want. it as much as I can with the breaker bar. But usually I think it goes to 140 the torque spec. So I'm already done.